catalysis. In this video, we're going to define a catalyst and more specifically define an enzyme. I want you to have a really general, vague familiarity with the concept of inorganic catalysts on a surface as well. It's something that comes up quite a bit and I think that you should be aware of. And then we'll discuss conceptually how a catalyst raises the rate of reaction. So in catalysis, we are going to be adding a substance that lowers the activation energy. So this is a graph very similar to the ones I showed you in earlier videos, where you had a reaction pathway. And first it goes up in energy, and then it comes back down. And here I've actually shown two different things on one graph. You'll notice in the lower graph, the beginning and the end are the same. That's because when we're doing catalysis, we aren't changing our reactants and our products. Those are the same. What we do is we add in some species that lowers the activation energy for us, which allows us the reaction to proceed faster. Because now it doesn't have to get up and over that energy barrier. It's not quite as high. A catalyst isn't generally used up in a reaction. So this should not be another reactant. So this is something you put into the reaction. It happens. And then the, react the catalyst is spit back out from the reaction. So be really careful when we're talking about intermediates. This is not even close to the same thing as catalysts, not at all. So go back to the earlier videos where we talked about that. These are not that. These aren't in the reaction mechanisms either. They aren't because we add them and then they are removed at the end. We add them in at the beginning and they're removed in at the end. They are not made in the reaction. So there's a ton of different ways that there's um, catalysis. This is an entire area of chemistry, an entire area of research um, I guess you could even say multiple areas of research, um, spanning both biology and chemistry. And so we are obviously not going to go in depth into any one of these. That would be a course in and of itself. But I do want to talk about two main types and just a tiny little bit about each one. So first off, enzymes. So these are something that you should have heard about in, in you know, your various chemistry classes or biology classes or um, even just kind of a daily part of life. And so the way that these worked, and I, I just picked two very random ones. So I picked DNA polymerase because I think it's kind of an interesting one. So this one, for instance, if you have a kind of vague idea of how DNA um, replicate, you split the DNA, and then you have the new DNA coming on, and then they have to polymerize, or they have to connect together. You can't just stick the puzzle pieces together and expect them to stay. There's got to be a reaction that actually binds them together. We're not going to go into depth on this, um, but it's a, good, it's, it's a good thing to just kind of note that, hey, our DNA needs these sorts of things too. If, that were, if we waited for that to happen spontaneously, we would not be able to survive. So this is a good example of something where you can easily see how if you put it in exactly the right orientation, it's way more likely to happen. And that's how a lot of, if not all, catalysts work. They put things in the right orientation so that the activation energy is lowered. So usually we kind of look at these, um, if we want to look at them in a very biological perspective, as puzzle pieces. And for this level of class, that's, that's a very good way of looking at it. So if we have two different substrates, our, in this case our red and our pink, our little pieces, and we have our catalyst, in this case our big blue thing, and they normally, our, our red and our pink, might not align in exactly the right method to react. So if we show it attached to the blue, to have been just the right orientation to be able to react. And that's not very likely to happen, especially because some of these are really, really complex structures. So the one that I showed you here, I showed you the DNA polymerase, that's like an actual model of what it would look like. It's super complicated. But with this catalyst, it comes in and it lets the pieces connect in. And it puts them in a state where it's very easy for them to react. And then the product goes about its own way and the catalyst goes about its own way, and then the catalyst can do this again and again and again and again. So the only reasons why we have to replace catalysts is eventually you can kind of just degrade them, just like any chemical, especially a biological chemical, can be degraded. Um, but it's not actually the reaction that's using it up. And so they can be reused, which is really nice because some of these are very expensive and very difficult to make. So this is one kind of very wide category. Um, you know, enzymes encompasses a very, very diverse amount of 
um, situations. And I just picked one. But there's another equally diverse um, set of catalysts, which are inorganic catalysts. So I just picked one um, random one that comes up in, in everyday life, which is a catalytic converter. So if you look at what happens in your car on a pretty regular basis, you can have NO, um, so the nitrogen oxides going to nitrogen and oxygen, carbon monoxide plus oxygen going to CO2. Now, none of these are reactions that happen very easily. So what happens is, is if your car just starts spewing out all sorts of fumes, a lot of those are really, really dangerous. And you might say, oh, like carbon dioxide. No, way worse than carbon dioxide. This is actually one of the things that the catalytic converters converts things into. Because overall, carbon dioxide isn't that dangerous for us. Um, in lower quantities, it's not a big deal. Now, of course, if you have millions and billions of cars, you get global warming, and that's an entirely different situation. But a small amount of carbon dioxide isn't going to kill you in the same way that carbon monoxide would. And so what a catalytic converter does is it pulls some of these really bad species, like the nitrogen oxides and the carbon monoxides, and it turns them into things that are relatively harmless, like nitrogen and oxygen and CO2. Um, and so this is just one thing that happens. And the way that this works is you have a substrate. And the substrate doesn't react. So this is just a surface. Um, in this case, maybe a metal grid. Um, you can also, in, in other sorts of inorganic catalysis, you can use silica beads. You can use carbon. Basically, any substance that just doesn't want to really react. And you can stick the catalyst on it. And not all inorganic catalysts do this, but a lot of them do. And so I think it's kind of a good thing to be aware of. And this allows a nice flat surface or whatever surface, and the substances can come across it, it can react, and then it can go on. And then the catalyst is still there, ready to go for the next set. And the next set can come, and they can react, and then they can go on. And this can just happen for pretty much forever um, to allow more and more and more of the reaction to happen. And in all cases, it's helping to just put things in the right orientation. And there's a lot of really specific examples of this if you are interested. And you know you want to go online and look around, and you can see how all of these different things work. But to kind of do one last review overview of what catalysis is, this increases the speed of the reaction. That's why we would want to use it. We can take something that's very slow and make it very fast. It does this without ever being used up. So if we put it into a reaction, we can get it back out at the end. Um, sometimes whatever the situation is makes it impossible to get it back out. But it's not because it was used up. It reuses itself over and over and over again. There are two types that we discussed here, enzymes and inorganic catalysts. And those are both big umbrella areas of um, research. But there's also some other types that we just didn't discuss that um, play a role in science as well. So this is just sort of a tip of the iceberg of this topic.